What's up, LS Crazy Amigos? It's finally that time, that wonderful special time. We're gonna take this car tomorrow down to get dyno <laughs> All right, it's finally here, it's finally here. Let me explain to you what a dyno does. You're basically paying someone a couple hundred dollars to beat the snot out your car. A dyno measures the power of the car. And I'm not talking about the power at the, at the, at the, at the flywheel or the engine. Th that that's all cool but you lose about maybe 10 I believe 10 to 20 percent at the wheel now that 10 to 20 percent loss of power is what's known as parasitic loss anytime you have two fixed position and you have moving parts in the center of them you're going to encounter some type of loss in power for example let's take an automatic transmission car okay it's going to go from the engine right and then you're going to go through what's known as a torque converter and then you go through the transmission then you go through the, the drive shaft to the axles out to the wheels that's where the power is going to go to the wheels that's why i say horsepower number should be rated at the wheels so you're going to take some type of you're going to you're going to have some type of loss of 10 to 20 percent of power of the engine's power through the transmission and all that stuff same with a same with a manual you're going to have a, a clutch and you're going to have gears in the transmission and then you're going to go through the drive shaft through the axle out to the wheels now with an automatic you're going to probably lose a little bit more because the only thing that keeps the automatic moving is fluid fluid makes the automatic move all right so now if you had the engine and you had the axle hooked right onto it you're going to you're going to encounter very very little parasitic loss so same with the supercharger all right, so there's going to be a little bit of parasitic loss, but it's going to be a big gain. So it takes a belt wrapped around a pulley on the supercharger driven by the engine. So it's a catch-22. So I'm going to lose a little to gain more. So it also takes into consideration the wheel size, some dynos, and also the rear end ratio. So like I said, whatever planted, you want to know what the power is at the wheel, and you can tune your car at the same time. So that's what's going on with this. <laughs> You see, every time I see that video, mm, it gives me the Dino Jitter Blues. I got the Dino Jitter Blues. So much to gain and so much to lose. I got the Dino Jitter Blues. Mm. Check this out. You saw the video. Now here are the facts. It cost me over three thousand dollars to get my car back, and my wallet's no longer fat. Oh, my wallet's empty. Oh, my car was down for so long. Uh, mm, mm. Check this out. You see, the only time I'm comfortable is when my baby is on home. Uh, mm. Look at here. You see, the only time I got peace of mind is when my baby is driving home. Dinah Jitter Blues. So much to lose. Dinah Jitter Blues. Mm. I got the Dinah Jitter Blues. Right about now, I got the Dinah Jitter Blues because I'm going to put my car back on the dyno. That's right. And I think everyone, the night before you go and put your car in the dyno, or either while you're there, you get those Dino Jitter Blues. Let's go back to that video. Now, after further investigating, you know, once I got the car on home, I found out that when I had the drive shaft made, you had the universal joint. Universal joint goes into a yoke. Now on that yoke, you have tabs at the end that kind of hold the yoke in place. And what was happening was the guy who, who uh, built my drive shaft, local guy around here, he uh, gave me the wrong strap. So when I tightened it down, it was tight. But then under pressure on the load, it was going back and forth. It was wiggling back and forth. And then it sheared off one of those tabs. And then what happens is the axle kicked out and it kicked out 120 miles an hour. So a good thing, no, you don't think, but it is a good thing because what's happening is, is that if that had kicked out when I was driving the car, when I was racing the car, not that I raced this car, but had that dri had that happened when I was rolling, it could have been disastrous. It could have been, it could have been horrible. So you kind of want to find the faults of your car on the dyno. So like I said, this car has been through, I guess, maybe altogether maybe anywhere from nine to 11 dyno cycles. When I say cycles, I mean like that one was one. It went through three that day. This is gonna go through another series of dyno cycles. That's why I got that dyno jitter blues. So what I'm doing right now, is I'm just take, you know, like trying to take any fault out the equation. I'm checking all of the, all of the, 
the levels, want to make sure I got fresh oil in there. I, I made sure the spark plugs, I took spark plugs out, looked at them, they looked good. Topped off the tranny, topped off the, the dip fluid. I, I drove the car around, keeping it under boost. Drove the car around, working all the bugs out that I think I worked out anyway. So now, it is time to put the car on a dyno and see what it could do. And you know what? We're going to have a little fun. We're going to have a little fun. I wanted to hear from you guys. So all my Ellis Crazed Amigos, Facebook, and Instagram peoples, my friends, my loves, what's up? What I want to know is what kind of power do you think this car is going to be pushing? Because I want you to use whatever sci scientific form or whatever calculations you can figure it out. I want to see who comes closest to the horsepower and torque readings, okay? Now, these are the specs on this car. This car has the LY6. The only thing that was done to the engine was a cam, and here are the specs. All right? It's got 410 gears in the back, 18-inch wheels, and it's now got a supercharger, the LSA, all right? And I'll, the only thing that's done to the LSA was the isolator was changed to a solid isolator, and it's got a 2.55 pulley, all right? And let me see, is there anything else that you need to know? Oh, and the horsepower rating before the LSA was 448, I think it was 448, uh, what's called horsepower, 448 horsepower, and I think it was 430 foot-pounds of torque. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. 448, 430 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, now with the LSA, now with all the information you have, go and try to figure out, because I'm curious to know what kind of horsepower this car is going to be pushing. So I'm curious to see how many people come close, and uh, this is going to be fun. A little fun, you know, like we're going to have here in the garage shop, all right? So, like I said, tomorrow morning, me and my boy, KB, we're going to go down. He's going he's gonna to drive it because, like I said, I normally would drive this car down. But being that, like, I got to keep it out of boost, I can't really put this thing on the highway and drive it. So he graciously said that he would help me tow my car down because he has this big truck. It's Ford. That's, that's all well and good. Anyways, so he's going <laughs> he's gonna to tow it on down with me. And uh, we're going to have fun. We, we're going to see what's, what kind of numbers this car is going to push. So I'm a little nervous, <laughs> all right? So please, keep your fingers crossed, and I really appreciate it. And I want to tell you guys thank you very much for all the questions and answering. And, you know, like, I want you guys to let me know what you think this car is going to be pushing after the dyno, all right? And the winner will get, I don't know, they'll get the right answer, I guess. I don't know. But I'm looking at the clock on the wall. I should I say ceiling. It's time for me to head on and off and check some more stuff up before I take this car down, which will be tomorrow, and I'm excited. And, of course, I'm going to post it. So, as always, as always, please keep the questions coming, and please be easy, and I will catch you guys real soon. Right down to my shoes! <gasps>